Kumar, who is also an American. Yeah. So, Mr. Pranav Kumar, uh, who is our speaker for the day, is a seasoned fintech entrepreneur uh, with over two decades of experience in the financial service sector. His mission is to simplify and democratize the financial management for all. He is the founder of Cash Plus, a wealth management platform that empowers the users to craft their long-term investment portfolios, access quick liquidity across their assets, and optimize high-interest debts. Plus Cash currently is an asset Assets worth over 450 crores. He is also spearheading uh, HUEX, which is human experience in San Francisco, US, a startup dedicated to mitigating digital stress by offering collaborative living and working spaces for all. His wavering his unwavering passion for innovation and technology has led him to share his insights as a speaker and a guest lecturer on entrepreneurship at esteemed institutes like I am Shillong, uh, Tapmi Manipal, and University of North Texas. He is a frequent speaker and writer on topics related to finance, business, and entrepreneurship. And you can explore his videos, blogs, and postcard con and pod podcast contents under the hashtag Pranavtels. So, ladies and gentlemen, I open the mic to Bhaskar and I would like to call upon him to start this webinar for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Puneet sir. Uh, without any, without any much ado, I think I would uh, request my CEO, Mr. Pranav Kumar, to jump on the call, jump on the platform, and please take it away. Uh, Pranav uh, sir, please. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Puneet. Uh, thanks for the introduction, and uh, happy to have you um, all this evening. And uh, especially, it's a weekend, right? So this participation is like definitely encouraging and happy to have it more interactive. Some of the things we will cover with the slides which we have prepared, but uh, mostly we will just make it more interactive so that uh, people can um, ask more specific questions, understand the context of the, the, the finance and investments and some of those things uh, while living abroad and what are the some of the changes uh, uh, people can have by having a local wealth expert back in India and what kind of competitive advantage uh, we can create uh, on in the portfolio so far by having a local expert uh, back in India for the wealth management and some of those things. So uh, Bhaskar, would you mind sharing the slides so that we can just follow our discipline and uh, kind of uh, that will be um, good to create a sort of Are you able to see the screen? Uh, not yet. Not, just, not. Just, just, just. I think uh, now. Yeah. 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 So we can directly jump into the second slide. Uh, this is more like, like the the audience we are discussing and uh, sort of the uh, the type of uh, audience which we have and what kind of uh, uh, so this uh, this is the so the, we have multiple asset class where we can invest our money um, and uh, stock capital markets are one of the asset class mutual fund is one of the asset class gold is asset class real estate is one of the asset class but the think of investing in asset class one of the thumb rule I use while living in five different countries and managing the wealth of different people in different countries that many developed countries has a different rate of inflation, okay? And uh, developing country has a different rate of inflation. So if you see the countries like United States, the inflation rate is two, two and a half percent. 
But when you see the countries like India, then the inflation rate is somewhere around seven and a half, eight percent. Okay. So then the devaluation of the money, suppose 100 rupees you have, that becomes 93 rupees in uh, countries like India. But like countries like America, it only becomes 97 or 98 because devaluation is things more expensive in India, in developing economy. Then very we can get a good tax return. So if uh, if we see the uh, GDP of the country, growth rate of the India is eight eight and a half percent, and inflation is seven seven and a half percent. So we should aim that we can create twelve to fifteen percent CAGR compounded annualized return. So when you compare gold, real estate, and other asset classes where the tax rates are relatively higher, then it becomes difficult to outperform in terms of GDP plus, uh, uh, you know, and the the inflation kind of return. So that's where uh, we have to choose the asset cl cl class wisely. Not saying that one specific asset class is good or bad, but like no, we should diversify the strategy based on that. So this is how we can just understand around the investment classes and asset class. And one of the thumb rule, which I have discovered for myself in last, uh, we have we have discovered in last 20 years is this what I have just shared with you. Uh, yeah, next. So uh, other, most of the NRI I have seen in last uh, 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 so many years, we have seen that like, no, uh, um, as few people are commenting that um, it's uh, the voice is not coming properly. Is is any is there any problem with the voice so far? No, not, not no. So. I think we are we can all hear. I think the issue may be from the individual yeah, person. It I guess. be an individual issue. Pranam, you can continue. And Puneet, you can also request everybody else to switch off their video so that the bandwidth issue will not come on their side. Yes. Yes. Please. Okay. Yeah. So uh, mostly I've seen that uh, the community, NRI community, uh, are investing into fixed income products. And the fixed income product sometimes becomes very, very tricky because there are two regions. If they are, you are investing into a fixed income product, one risk we have which is not in the slide, but right now I just definitely wanted to talk about it because it came into my mind is also exchange rate risk. Suppose dollar, I was living in America in 2012, uh, 15 to 16, that time dollar versus INR was 63 and right now it's 83. So if someone is uh, sending out the money back in India and doing some of those investments which are generating fixed income return, which is creating a less return in terms of inflation, uh, less than inflation after paying the taxes. But when you take the money back uh, in the respective country, and if you are converting that money in 83 rupees right now, which is dollar INR exchange rate, then you are getting far less dollar um, in the same amount. So then two types of risk, risk uh, gets covered in, uh, in, 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 in when you invest into fixed income instruments is one is exchange rate risk and one is the lower risk rate than the inflation so if lower risk rate than the inflation and if you are in that particular country then it becomes uh, that even if you want to buy things back in india and you want to keep 40 percent of your wealth or 60 percent of the wealth back in india then it's a very, very important to at least beat the inflation plus GDP kind of return in the that particular uh, country. One more important aspect here is uh, the closer you get, the closer you get to the retirement, your risk appetite it also down substantially. This year, then you should do a, a asset allocation and 
more asset allocation in equity. So if lean into fixed income uh, products, then it becomes fairly easy for you to de-risk your portfolio in the later years of your life cycle. Because when you turn 60, when you turn 65 and you do not want to take risk, that point of time we can uh, shift all our portfolio into fixed income products. And even though it is uh, giving us lesser return, we will be okay with that but not in the initial stage of our life cycle uh, in, in, in our life cycle. So this is also one of the important understanding around uh, this thing. But most of the time when you go to the bank RM relationship managers, because of their interest are so much into CASA, current account and saving account, the increasing the books in the, in the banks. So then sometimes they misguide and give you an option which are around 5 6% or 7% for the nris which is not uh, enough return to beat even inflation in the long term forget about uh, the gdp so that's why the asset allocation is is very important the one more challenge which comes is the when nris are living abroad they do not uh, they are not able to track the market very very clearly so suppose you guys are sitting in a country where it's late afternoon or turning out to be evening and it's it's uh, you know late evening over here so market hours and some of the news and some of those the way information is coming and if you want to act on those information that's also one of the become one of the thing one of the challenge becomes for uh, for for the nri so that 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 is also why you should keep one of the partner who can oversee some of your investments uh, back in India. I will give you the example. Um, I was closely monitoring uh, Stanford uh, Credit Union Fund back in California, looking after some of those things. And JP Morgan was chasing them that, hey, I want to have those funds uh, back here in India for the emerging market exposure. But a Stanford Credit Union was choosing some local partner back in India rather than choosing JP Morgan because being in the global presence and back in America, their ability to track the local market or act on the information very quickly becomes very, very challenging. So even though it's a decision which you have to take, but you should always consider that, hey, I have someone back in India who has the eye on my investments, okay? So this is also one of the things we should keep in our mind. Yeah, uh, next. Yeah, so um, there are uh, three types of portfolio usually, discretionary, non-discretionary, and advisory. Discretionary is complete freedom you give to the advisors. And there it comes the biases, multiple biases of the fund managers. I won't name some of the very, very famous fund managers in India because they have given a very, very higher intrinsic value of those portfolios. They, have, they are continuously outperforming at the three and five years level, um, you know, for the PMS kind of product, which is like a very, very so kind of in terms of investments. Also, it is very much in the higher side when you are thinking of participating in discretionary portfolio, the size of investment is 50 lakhs rupees and above. Non, uh, uh, and uh, then you have managers, you are relying on one manager who has all the say in your investments. And usually the these type of discretionary pro portfolio has very, very concentrated portfolios. So when I say concentrated portfolio, usually they have 14 to 15 stocks in the portfolio, not like 35 to 40 well diversified stocks. So this is uh, non discretionary discretionary is one uh, type of portfolio where client has a say and they approve the transaction and request and the third is advisory where we come in the picture we where you have two advantage uh, where uh, advisory portfolio where you have two advantage one is the fee you have a very less fee because discretionary portfolio has three to four percent management charges then 20 15 to 20 percent sometime profit sharing so at the end of the day i can um, separately share you the email um, bhaskar can share the some knowledge uh, email to all of you maybe later um, that like no uh, you see the expenses of those portfolio becomes almost 3x 4x more than the advisory portfolio it is not well diversified it has some biases it 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 is possible that they have 
the the designed intrinsic value which is not well aligned with the portfolio so those are the things uh, we have some disadvantages and the, because of the cost region we should be very very informed i am not criticizing any portfolio here or any type of investment options here but at least you have to be very very aware that hey where i am putting my money what i am doing with my money what are the biases involved in my money now uh, what are the diversification involved in my money so how the advice is affecting what are the expenses and some of those things yeah next so uh, yeah i have already covered the lower fee lower minimum investment and access of large audience okay so access third point i would like to emphasize the access of large audience so suppose there is a discretionary portfolio which has 500 crore worth of investment which is given by 100 uh, investors okay 100 investors 5 crore each has given 500 crores and that's the discretionary portfolio pms size and average pms size is usually 500 to 1500 crore but if you see the mutual fund aum it it is around 2000 crore to 40000 crore maybe and we will come on to it as well that how some of strategy which uh, we follow is like and how it works out in our favor um so then when redemptions happens suppose there is a risk in the market suppose there is a war like condition or geopolitical risk or something like that 100 out of 50 investors if they are pulling the money into the same day then the redemption becomes a very big challenge that fund managers are selling all the companies all the stocks at one go and then it becomes uh for for those small set of investors it becomes a very very volatile and risky investor investment so the many people in the pms or discretionary kind of investment they do not disclose some of these kind of risk which is inherent in the portfolio but based on how we have seen the industry in last 22 years um, this is very very important for me to give you this perspective also so that you are well informed about how you are making these decisions around the market okay so yeah the next yeah it's my diversification but diversification doesn't mean that you bought 10 different mutual funds or seven different mutual funds or seven different portfolio many people the way bank rms and some of these people communicate that sir i you have four mutual fund or seven mutual fund you have your portfolio well diversified but that's not the truth so we have i mean like there are product i don't want to talk only about our product at this moment because there are certain limitation to this webinar but uh, there are certain uh, thought process uh, which we can uh, think of and design and you can talk to your wealth expert is around what are the overlaps so for seven out of your 10, 10 funds has hdfc bank then what is the total concentration of hdfc bank and then out of 2 crore rupees how much exposure you have in hdfc bank if you see that like you no know, we have some of the pr products if we put it in the excel sheet you see that okay out of 2 crore you have 11% exposure in hdfc bank so 11% of 2 crore is becomes like 22 lakhs exposure in hdfc bank and that is the, uh, that is kind of like you no know, you you have so much concentration in one stock which is very very risky so then you have to do the risk mitigation by not understanding the portfolio based on just having different funds but also understanding that what is the negative correlation where is the potential to high risk what are the sectors we can we can choose how the uh, one portfolio is negatively correlated to the other portfolio the second is the different types of asset class i'll give you one example of 2008 when uh, subprime crisis happened in united states and we were very very active in that market that time as well so that time we have 40% of our money we have exposed into gold mining fund in africa and caribbeans uh, through a feeder fund of blackrock and uh, that has created a very good return over the equity market equity market fell by 50% and like you know the gold mining fund ha have uh, increased by almost 300% gold as a commodity grew by 100% but mining funds profitability grew by almost 300% so that time like we have outperformed the market we got cnbc tv at an awards and all those things so i am what i'm just trying to tell you is uh, 
hedging the risk mitigation is not only around the same sort of asset class and different types of sectors, but it is also about how we can choose different asset class internationally as well and just wisely allocate into ETFs, some exchange traded fund, also some of the gold mining funds, also some of the metal funds or some tech funds or whatever, very, very wisely so that my portfolio is negatively correlated and well hedged. So that's uh, that's that's uh, that's what I would like to say when I talk about diversi diversification. Yeah. Uh, the next. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the goal based investment is uh, very, very important. Uh, so uh, how your personal goals are aligned. So when I was 11 years ago, uh, 11 year old, then the sugar price in the country uh, like India was seven rupees per kg. But right now, the same sugar price is around, uh, um, uh, you know, um, 50, more than 50 rupees per kg. So 7x price in hike in the sugar. Uh, so similarly, when I say that in India, if someone has the living expenses or lifestyle cost, which is almost 1, 1.5 lakhs or 2 lakhs rupees per month, this number will look almost 4.5 lakh rupees per month in next 15 years. If we just compound the number by... Uh, seven and a half percent inflation adjusted. So to achieve that larger sum, which is going to come based out of inflation, almost four and a half lakh rupees. I'm just giving you a broader number so that you can understand it and you can compound and we can just have a deeper level discussion and questions when it comes. So almost a million dollar, a million US dollar, eight and a half crore rupees we need to have, uh, if we want to have this four, four and a half lakh rupees monthly inflow at the retirement. So similarly around the education, major purchase. So we can see that like, okay, what is the cash flow? What is the risk-free return? How much we can make? And then we can create a goal-based investing. Goal-based investing not only means that we can just invest the money and uh, just leave it for that particular goal as well. We can very much readjust the goals and just take care of some of the high priority jobs, high priority work in the middle if we want to do it. Uh, so that's also we can we can do and we can have more deeper level discussion if you have any questions. Yeah. Yeah. So now the 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 value proposition of plus cash. Uh, now from this slide, I'm allowed to. Uh, speak uh, about some of the things what we do uh, so one of the portfolio intelligence is like uh, the money is simple actually and uh, money management the way we see is like how your portfolio intelligence can create a gdp plus inflation kind of return and we have ai based model where we see 20 different parameters to analyze the portfolio and the generate the higher return and we always take this, there are few companies in United States taking this approach and we are the only company in India, some sort of taking uh, this particular approach, uh, uh, which is network based approach where your asset side can generate far more than what you pay for your liabilities. So we can say that like, no, or if your asset side is generating 15 to 18% return, and whenever you have medium term liquidity or short term liquidity or short term cash requirement, if you withdraw as a NRI, you pay the actual taxes. Okay, so then you don't withdraw the portfolio and you just take a credit against your portfolio at 10%, around 10%. So then your asset is growing at much higher rate than what you pay for your liability and you create this delta. Most of the time what banks does is they uh, gi they give you the fixed income, fixed deposits, and then give you the F loan against those FD. So post-tax return, your asset creates far less than what you pay for your loan interest. So these are some of the things which uh, you have to see as an investor that how I'm allocating my investments in terms of taxes as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, taxes also we can automate. We have a product called uh, tax view, uh, which we can. So we are, this number is 700, but uh, right now we are serving almost uh, 1100 uh, plus uh, sort of uh, investors. 450 crore is our, and uh, AUM, asset under management. And we serve almost uh, 
17, 18 nationality across the world. Uh, so that's where we are. Uh, we got CNBC TV in award for best portfolio management uh, in 2008, which was a very, very difficult time uh, in financial market. And I have just briefly spoken about what are the strategy we have taken, what are the things we have used to kind of do that, uh, achieve the outperformance. Yeah. So we have a very good track record of 20 years. Uh, um, if you would be interested, we can send you out that what are the decisions we have taken in 2016, 2018, 2020, uh, 2018, and how it has performed, outperformed the market. Okay. So I always see say it in my uh, my 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 the, the class, and we always follow this principle that uh, uh, in last 20 years that. Uh, when return comes shows up on the excel sheet the real likelihood of return becomes very diminished so how we can just create and identify some of those asset uh, allocation way in advance and uh, they become the five star rated fund in the future and uh, um, you know and you create a wealth so for one of the example we have taken exposure in 2016 in some of the funds where uh, the AUM asset under management of those funds were 900 crore, and now those uh, uh, funds are uh, almost 40,000 crore. So 40x growth in AUM and some of those things happen. So we come on a discovery call, uh, we do the planning, we do the transaction, and then we have automated system to do the reporting and everything. Um, we have the product called Credit Borrow, and uh, we can just... Uh, you can borrow against the, the 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 your security to save on your taxes on save on your long term opportunity cost as well uh, next next slide yeah next this we have covered so and we have talked about the network based approach where how your assets can generate more than what you pay for your liabilities uh, and just taking it like a simple approach and the network based approach helps you understand the money better and saves your taxes as well. Um, so that's, that's what we are covering up here. Yeah. Next. Yeah. So these are some of the parameters which I've talked, spoken about that, how the asset, lesser asset under management, how the, the intrinsic value uh, fund manager is assigning, what is the portfolio turnover ratios, uh, price earning ratio is one of the parameters, but there are 20 different parameters. So we have a trade this term for the parameters for your portfolio because when you do the DIY to use these applications you have more than two fund uh, to select and how do you know that which fund has a line made you should do uh, around you um, for the asset your community specifically and uh, yeah that's what we can we can we can think of yeah and if you have a company then we can you can if you are investing as a company, then you can write off that investment as a uh, interest as a expense int expense, and then like you no, know, your cost of capital becomes fairly low. It's around six six and a half percent. So we we are replacing this product. We are, a lot of products are getting a lot of margin funding products in Indian stock markets are getting replaced by our product because the rates are very low, and we don't have any foreclosure charges. We don't have any processing fee. We don't have any. Um, you know such uh, things so you can pay whenever you want to withdraw and you pay interest only on the withdrawn amount otherwise you are not paying any interest on any money on the on the limit yeah yeah oh, i think uh, thank you so much prana for the for taking us taking the entire team through uh, the you. presentation uh, i think i will request puneet sir and the team from ipf to maybe start the q and a round I think we are ready for the Q&A session now. And uh, any and all questions are welcome. Uh, we'd be very happy to, you know, uh, address your queries. Thank you, Bhaskar. Thanks for the cash testing for taking up this uh, very informative webinar.
and most of us just look at the numbers when the stock markets are going and up and down and thus we see what has happened to the investment at the end of the day that's all uh there are a lot yeah. of questions on it uh one mr abhishek has asked what is your thought on ulip against mutual funds for retirement planning uh yeah so you look we all have a very very good question so uh, we all have seen that ulips uh, Eighth standard, we have studied one formula of future value. Future value is equal to present value 1 plus R by 100 to the power N. That's the compound interest formula. Okay. So whenever your PV, the present value, is getting compromised, your future value is definitely getting compromised. What happens in ULIP? Because of high expenses, because of the higher commission, and we have never, never promoted ULIPs on in last 22 years, because we see that uh, risk is a different product and investment is a different product. We should risk is a pure vanilla product and investment is a pure investment product. We should never, never, never uh, mix investment with the risk. Okay, risk is a separate product, investment is a separate product. So when uh, answer, answering to your question, um, you know, um, when your PV becomes low because of the higher allocations of these distributing the commissions to the agents, then like this PV becoming the actual PV, suppose 100 rupees are getting allocated and 40% commission or 30% commission going to someone, someone, the first year premium itself becomes 60 rupees or 65 rupees or sometimes 55 as well. I have many names where it is 55. So if it will become 55 to 100, which was your original investment amount, you will make just the the in you will recover the investment forget about the profit and that itself takes two and a half three years so eventually you are not making any money into uh till two three and a half four years okay so that is one of the uh thing which uh, uh we, the the region where you should avoid making investments in the in the ULA. the second is very very interesting they will give you a very fancy excel sheet and saying, sir, you will get this one lakh rupees per month after 15 years or 20 years. But what will be the value of that one lakh after 20 years? We have just discussed it, that one and a half lakh will become four, four and a half lakh rupees, right? In just 15 years in terms of withdrawing the cash and everything, right? So then you understand this, that if you're, if they are just giving you a benchmark in solution or cash flow, which is very, very apt for today, how can it be apt for next 15 in next 15 to 20 years so answering your question in nutshell we should definitely 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 avoid ulip kind of investment it's not at all good for your uh, this thing and many times people uh, in uh, india their relatives are taking these insurance licenses and they just force people to take these insurance products you say that hey you come have a sweet have a coffee but my money management no we are not going to have it like this because of my pv is getting compromised in these kind of products right so that's that's one of the thing i would say in answer to this yeah it was a long but it it i wanted to answer it like this yeah thank you yeah thank you the next question is from mr bharat in present scenario what should be the average return on a portfolio for say 50 lakh to 1 crore oh yeah so safely you should always uh, assume bharat that the return should be inflation plus gdp return so in any country uh, like india 7 and a half percent and plus 8 percent uh, 14 and a half percent 15 and a half percent cazr you should assume but uh, like we have given almost 30 35% in last cazr in last 3 years I will always try surprise you with the return, but like you no, know, this is the average one should expect. If someone is in America, their inflation rate and growth rate is lesser, so definitely they should expect lesser return. So when market gets matured, the return comes down. So matured country, evolved country has lesser return, and emerging countries have a better return. So that's how one should take this uh, approach. And since we will be managing your money in India. You can safely assume that okay, post tax we should assume inflation plus GDP, which is fifteen percent CAGR, uh, twelve to fifteen percent CAGR. But this number is certainly going to be better with uh, some of the things we have achieved in last uh, twenty twenty two years. Yeah, have I answered your question, Bar? Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
the next question is from Mr. Siddharth. Can yeah. you please explain how do you use AI to create differentiated portfolio? Oh, that's a wonderful question. So sometimes what happens is a lot of earnings, suppose earning of one specific company. So you invest money into mutual funds, different mutual funds, which is a com combination of 40 stocks or 35 stocks. When you do discretionary investment, it's a combination of 20 stocks. When the re report comes, the fact sheet comes, by the time fact sheet comes, things become a lot more delayed because it's a one, one month old report in terms of asset, like you know, where the allocation is. But when you see the earning, earning multiple EPS in particular stock, so suppose 20 out of 45 stocks has a better EPS this year, this quarter, estimated EPS this quarter, then the price earning will fall, price earning of those 20 stocks. So estimated PE, we can calculate very quickly. I'm giving you one example, and there are multiple examples like that. There are 20 different parameters we can discuss right now. Uh, but happy to get on a 101 call and explain you uh, this in details. But right now I would say that actively and real time understanding that, okay, based on the live information about the company, based on the earning multiple of the company, based on the sum of the acquisition of the in, uh, company, based on the new order book coming into those company, what are the difference a portfolio or what are the earning a portfolio is creating, which is making the portfolio more attractive and intrinsic value is getting more attractive in those portfolios. So when we understand the intrinsic value real time based on these AI tools, then you will have a very, very good understanding Understanding that where to uh, deploy the money and from where we should move out the money. Okay, so this is this is some of the example which we 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 used to do we used to do from the Excel um, since last uh, uh, 15 20 years. But now things have been more easy that with the help of prompt engineering we can just put some of these data and then like you no know, this data gives a very very concrete and evaluated sort of portfolio and analysis. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is Mr. Uh, from Mr. Ramakrishnan. He has two questions. What's sure. the LDS rate? And what is that? Does, does LAS work like overdraft or lump sum withdrawal? Yeah, it works like very good question. So uh, LAS rate is anywhere between nine and a half to ten and a half percent, and it is what it works like overdraft. So suppose you have taken the so our bank has a limit of twenty lakhs rupees, and here we can give you the limit of uh, two crore, three crore, five crore, whatever you need, because we have multiple partners, and then that's how we work. And it's on actual utilization. So suppose five crore portfolio, you have taken two and a half crore worth of uh, a limit or overdraft and you are using 15 lakhs rupees to for sending your uh, daughter in an engineering college or mbbs college as a first installment of fee you only pay money on uh, that 15 lakhs rupees we have few examples where few of our clients daughter they went to switzerland for culinary courses and then they have opted this product over education loan because there is no foreclosure charges we, we only use uh, we only uh, charge interest only on the utilization so then this product becomes even more attractive than traditional products like education loan we have few examples where people have replaced their car loan with this product because uh, because then for, we have, suppose you bought a BMW worth uh, one crore rupees and six months you have a cash flow, you want to pay it off. The car loan company will tell you, hey, you pay us two and a half percent foreclosure charges. And then two and a half percent of a 70 lakh rupees car becomes one and a half lakh, two lakh rupees. And people, they just lock the customer like that. We want our customers to be so, so, so empowered in terms of all this flexibility, because it's their money. We want to empower them around money and we want to give them the best solution where they have the liquidity and gain on their portfolio. So these are some of the examples which will help you understand the overdraft and their huge cases that how people can use this. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next question is, so uh, what your view on right as REIT as asset class and arbitrage funds? 
Yeah, very, very good. Excellent question. Uh, so REIT is uh, very good, but liquidity is compromised. Okay. REIT, suppose there is a real estate investment trust. Uh, uh, Sneha is on the call right now. And uh, um, I mean, they, they come from a family where real estate is like, you know, getting done since last 20 years, 25 years um, or, or more than that. And they manage sort of the portfolio worth 300 crores plus. And uh, uh, REIT has few changes uh, which has been made in last uh, uh, six, six and a half months ago, uh, which like REIT earlier, it was 500 crore. And now people can float 50 crore REIT also in India. As an investor, if you want to float a REIT, I will have a different question and different answer. But as an investor, what you have in, in REIT? So if, as an investor, you have uh, is your liquidity is getting compromised, okay? your liquidity is suppose you are investing and that till the time the real estate exits are not happening, you are not receiving the money. So like MF and all, you can liquidate in three years, three and a half years, four years as well. Here, your, your cycle could become like even uh, seven years, eight years, nine years as well for on the exit. And the, sec uh, the, the interest which you are getting or some hurdle rate or some of the rates you are getting on the REITs is also taxed at a different rate. So overall, liquidity and taxation is two things which you should consider uh, about the REIT. Uh, was there any other question related to yeah. REIT? Yeah. Your view on arbitrage funds. Uh, yeah, arbitrage is an excellent fund. I mean, um, I, I would suggest that whatever money you guys have, in fixed deposit, you should immediately move that money into arbitrage fund. And this I can say with a lot of confidence, and I will send you literature about it. There are two regions. There are fixed deposit and uh, liquid funds or debt funds of mutual funds are getting taxed at the same rate, and you all are in a higher tax bracket. The arbitrage fund is a fund where they take care of arbitrage opportunity. They they, they they lock the return based on arbitrage opportunity. If you see the return, it's originating straight line graph. So there is no, no much of volatility, but it is getting taxed at equity rate. So short-term equity rate and long-term equity rate. So it, it has a lesser taxation, almost one third taxation than, um, than, than the fixed income, other, other fixed income products. And you can enjoy the higher. So if you shift the the your fixed deposit into arbitrage i can very very confidently say that you can create an additional return of 200 basis point to 300 basis point without taking any risk uh, and it is it is as liquid as any other instruments so liquidity doesn't have any problem even market is falling by 5000 7000 8000 point you are enjoying the taxation of liquidity but you are uh, getting the return of fixed income. You can sleep peacefully in the night. It's not about sleep, sleeping peacefully in the night. It's about asset allocation. You have 100 rupees and you want to have 20 rupees in emergency fund. That emergency fund you uh, can use at any point of time. You want to use at any point of time to buy watches, aspirations, travel, anything which you want to do, buying a car or whatever use you have and any, any emergency situation then rather than keeping that money into fixed deposit or debt funds or liquid funds, I would suggest that money should be in arbitrage fund because it has higher return with less, less taxes. Yeah. That's a very good one. What yeah. is better, AIF or PMS? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, AIF and PMS both have the expense ratio, uh, which are like you no know, management fee, which is uh, two and a half, three percent, uh, and MF you are giving far less than that. Um, so I would say that um, if I am very, very oriented around generating more returns and higher returns uh, for myself or higher bro brokerage for myself, I would sell you our AIF or PMS. But at this moment, I'll I'll tell you that who, even if you want to go for AIF uh, and and PMS. Uh, you are definitely giving, uh, if you are going to AIF and PMS, you are definitely giving higher management fee. And then whatever returns come, you share that return with 15% uh, to 20% of the return to with your fund manager. So two types of uh, 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 outgoing, which is happening in terms of management fee and profit sharing. Here, you don't have any profit sharing. 
you have lower management fee and then definitely you should go for mfs now, if you are very, very adamant that no, one crore I want to do in AIM, then you talk to your manager, have a very, very, very clear or transparent conversation with them that, hey, what, I will only share the money after making 20% or 30%. Why should I give you any money before making 20, 30% uh, out of that portfolio? Can you uh, make my management fee in institutional category, which is one, one and a half, two percent rather than three and a half, four percent. Okay. Uh, so those are two discussion. If you want to have these kind of products, you should have with your fund manager or I can have more, I can have a more detailed discussion with you guys. Uh, if you have any confusion or if you are selecting any product, I will help you select the product as well uh, in that particular category. And we'll have better products around the basket as well if we need to have. So, yeah. That's my answer to it. So um, uh, short answer is um, you should be aware about some of these things because most of the AIF and PMS have not performed really well in last uh, three to five years because of these two regions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving a little bit to the more on the shares part, what is your advice on investing in unlisted shares? Okay. Yeah. Unlisted shares are good. Uh, like REIT, I have addressed the question. But similarly, I would like to address the, like Kochi International Airport is one of the airport coming up in India and we have access of their share. NSC is not, uh, and is, is, was getting listed and like, no, we were have early access to those stocks. We were having farm EG shares uh, in some of our portfolio, uh, which is unlisted uh, share. The Again, it is, uh, the, when markets are bullish, we have to see the numbers that how we are just acquiring and what is the timeline these shares are getting listed. Otherwise, sometimes it becomes illiquid. Uh, liquidity becomes a challenge for those shares because you have acquired those shares. You have those shares in the DMAT account, but you can't sell those shares when you have you need. Uh, at the same time, you can't take uh, overdraft as well against those shares because they, there is no liquidity in those shares. So we have plenty of option listed uh, listed options in the market. So we should avoid, but any such good opportunity coming, we will definitely keep you in our email list and we will keep communicating you around what we feel around the unlisted space. But yeah, you should definitely think about the liquidity side of things and the taxes and some of the, these things which we have discussed, the IPO cycle, how soon they are going to get listed and all. Yeah. Okay. One of our listeners has been very active and she asked that you mentioned that investments and risk are different. But generally, we are told that more the risk in investment, the more profit it gets. So she wants a clarification on that. Yeah, um, not always true, but, but right asset allocation. The right asset allocation is the, uh, uh, sometimes I have seen uh, during pandemic, real estate crashed like, almost 300%, 200% in cities like Bangalore and Mumbai. Uh, but uh, we can't say that those are more riskier or less riskier. It is very, very relative. And you should always see multiple variable real time in those um, in th that particular time. And it's cyclical. So last two, three years, uh, uh, small companies or mid-sized companies have grown a lot. Large cap has not grown a lot. So maybe allocating and balancing based on what has grown and what has not uh, is going to be a right um, approach. It's not a blanket statement that more risk means more return and less risk means, means uh, less return. It's all about a very good allocation intelligence or asset allocation. And then we can have a sub -opt good optimal return on overall portfolio with a good liquidity. Yeah. Okay. The next one is for in a balanced portfolio, what should be the percentage yeah. for gold and for bonds along with equity, mutual fund, real estate? Okay. Uh, so this varies to uh, person to person. What are their goals? And that's why uh, we are not a DIY platform. We, uh, we come on a discovery call, 30 minutes discovery call with our client. We understand their cash flow. We understand what is their 
goals, short term goal, medium term goal and long term goal. And based on that, we can design and answer those specific question. We uh, we cannot give this blanket statement that okay, this is the 100, 100 rupees and we can allocate this like in 30% or 20% or 10% in gold and real estate and all those things. But one statement you should have, one thing which you can consider if your age is 30 years or 35 years or 40 years, then almost 100 minus your age, 60% uh, exposure should be there in equity or little more than that. And whenever your target year is coming close, then you shift more of the portfolio in the debt side, which becomes the risk-free. So this is these are the approaches you can take. Yeah. Yes, um, many of as you mentioned during your presentations, many of us keep our funds in FDs. Yeah. Some of those have uh, questions related to FDs that uh, NRIs FDs are tax free. Yeah. While uh, arbitrage fund gives a return of roughly around six percent or so and taxable. So why should we invest in arbitrage funds? Uh, arbitrage funds are giving roughly around eight eight and a half percent, a good ones, not six uh, percent. And the second reason is fixed deposit is not BT. Even if it is tax-free, I know there are type of accounts for NRI, it becomes tax-free. But like, is that tax-free return beating inflation? Can we do something around that which we can, like which, which creates 7.5% or more return in fixed income category as well? And then we can do a right asset, asset allocation and mix of equity and debt which can create a double digit return rather than getting a compromised return, which is not beating the inflation as well. So yeah, that's my question, that, that's my answer. And we can talk more in details about it whenever we want to have, yeah. Thank you. Uh, due to time constraints, I will take one uh, last questions for you. Yeah. Uh, it states that, is it possible for you to provide, uh, people have various in investments would you be able to analyze their investment and offer advice on them yeah, well, yeah what yeah. Kind of investments are there and if any kind of realignment readjustments are in yeah, will cash yeah. be able to give such kind of service yeah plus cash does this kind of and we have we have built a specific product by investing crores of rupees we call it asset view so asset view is a product which is uh, which Collide, which which consolidates all your portfolio at one place and shows that what are the negative correlation, what is the sector level allocation, what are the portfolio or stock level allocation, and then uh, some manual uh, intervention of what we have done in the last 20 years. So some of the work is getting done by tech and AI, and some of the work we just do on the top of it, and then we give you a very, very good uh, sort of idea that how we can just get things done for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It has been a very live uh, uh, for us. And sorry, sorry, Sunil, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. I think yeah. uh, if the Agarwal has actually asked about what kind of uh, funds we should invest in emergency yeah, for yeah. the for the emergencies. I think that will be a big benefit to the entire audience. Yeah. So, yeah. So usually, uh, four to six months of your lifestyle cost should be your uh, emergency fund. Okay. Uh, so you see, the one and a half lakh rupees or uh, two lakh rupees is your lifestyle cost back in India or uh, Lagos. Then, like, no, uh, or more than that. Uh, then, like, no, you should multiply it with six and. Uh, that could be your emergency fund. And we can keep it those funds into uh, sort of products which are not very, very volatile uh, with the geopolitical risk or any different sort of risk so that we can, it's like just a hands distance and you can pull it off partly or fully any point of time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'll hand over back to Puneet to take it from here. Yeah. Thank you so much. What an engaging, uh seminar i'm sure all of us we had a great time uh, an afternoon very well spent thank you once again pranav ji it was so nice uh, listening to you, uh, you. Uh, very smooth i think uh, we 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 all enjoyed this a lot of our questions answered and uh, I'm, I'm sure post this seminar also we'll uh, we'll have a lot
lot of questions and we'll reach out to you. So uh, 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 this, uh, I think uh, Bhaskar has also indicated that we'll be sharing this uh, presentation yeah. with all the all the people who has attended this webinar. And of course, uh, we would, uh, this is just the beginning and uh, we'll have many more to come. So thank you once again to all of you. you. Very engaging thank audience. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you, Puneet ji. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. It was really, really pleasure meeting you all this evening. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I would like to thank the team of IPF and uh, the president, uh, Pradeep, sir, for organizing this for us. Uh, thank you, thank you for giving us the opportunity to actually speak to the Indian diaspora in Lagos. And uh, for any kind of uh, investment advice or any kind of discussions that you would like to carry forward, uh, we'd be happy to share our details with you and uh, we'd look forward to connecting with each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Puneet, sir. Thank you so much, Sunil, sir. And thank, thank you, you so much, Pradeep, sir, and team IPF. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Evening ahead.